Welcome back to part 2 of bringing your car into a Settle Corsa. So if you watched part 1, I dug in on how to get started and what programs you need, how to unpack and pack data, and we started on this Toyota GT86 tuned right here, which we're going to continue with today, and we're going to go through power and engine. So if you pull up the data for this car into the data folder, the two files we're going to be working with today is the engine file and then the power file. So the engine file has some parameters about like you can add boost, uh, what your rev limiter is, just all the technical stuff about your engine. And then the power is where you actually graph the power. This is where you import your dyno graph. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pull up your dyno graph. Now what I found here was a basic uh, GT86 bolt-on E85 dyno. Looks like it makes about 198.91 horsepower at, I don't know, 7,000 RPM. So we're going to model this one into a Settle Corsa. So I start in Google Sheets, and what I'm going to do is plot the torque, not the power. So the torque, which is this f more faded red line that you can see, and I'm going to look at the units on the right here, where it says torque from foot-pounds, but ignore the units, it doesn't actually matter. We're just, we're just going to put these torque values because we're going to convert later to the right power that we need. Um, we're we're going to scale it up. So right now all you have to do is go in, find as many indexes as you can of torque, and plot them at each RPM. So we're going to get started here with the first index. Right here we have what looks like, th I don't know, 31, 33 RPM. So I'll put that. And then the torque is right above 120. So let's say, I don't know, 122. Then we're going to go again. See where the where the curve starts to go up here. I'm going to just find the apex of it. It looks like that's about 3250 RPM. So I'm going to plot. It's right at the 140 line, so we're going to put 140. So try to find like each major index of where the torque jumps. So if there's a straight line from one to the next, just just go towards the end of that straight line cuz I said, of course, it is going to graph this from point to point linearly. Okay, so I went through and finished plotting this. A couple things I want to note is that at the end, um, usually the dyno gets a little bit crazy because they'll let off the throttle, you'll hit the rev limiter, but try to smooth out the ending a little bit. So I put 7,500 RPM at about 127, just kind of smoothing out that curve a little bit. And another thing you want to do is actually put another power value, maybe like 500 RPM after the red line. So it doesn't really matter too much, just make sure that it's lower. Um, I, at 8,000 RPM, I put 105 torque. Um, just kind of following the curve there. And then at the beginning of the graph, something that I forgot to note is that usually right at the torque start, there's a, there's a big hill, and that's not natural. You can actually see that the stock run had higher torque at this like 3,100 RPM area. That's because he's really punching the throttle right here, uh, whoever's running the dyno. So kind of ignore this, this dip right here. What you should do instead is just smooth out the curve all the way down to zero. So what I did was I deleted the 3000 RPM index. We started at 3250. And then I put another index of zero RPM and 10 torque. You just want to have like something at zero. A set of course that prefers it like that. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your peak horsepower values, just those for now, you're going to put them into the power LUT file and you're going to erase all the other indexes that are in here. So take for me the so for this car the peak power is about 7000 RPM so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a few indexes around 7000 so we're going to type in 6600 154 7100, 147, and 7350, 132. And actually put that 0, 010 in there as well. So now what you can do is make sure you save. Go ahead and pack your data for the car. And then on the power graph right here, in Content Manager, click the three dots. Click Recalculate Curves Using Data Only. And you'll see a couple things. 
Um, transmission loss, you can, it doesn't really matter. That's just going to affect the displayed crank horsepower on the bottom here. You can just leave it at whatever. Um, take note of the power at the wheels. So it's saying that the power is 148. We're going to want to scale that up to the 198.91 that we're supposed to be at for this car. So right here, we're going to type 198.91 over 148 times this index. And make sure you have the equal sign in the beginning. So that's going to scale our torque values such that we're at the right power band right here. So we're going we're gonna to drag this all the way down through all the torque values. And then we're going to go ahead and now plot every single one of these values into the power let file. Okay, so I went ahead and did that, including the 8,000 RPM and leaving the 0 RPM alone. We're going to hit save, go back to the car, hit pack data, and then check out the graph again one more time. Now we should be at the right horsepower value, uh, close enough. Sometimes you're going to have to scale again. It's unfortunate, but that's just how it works. 197 wheel horsepower, I'll take it. And now you can look at the graph and make sure that it looks similar to the dyno that you're basing this off of. So now we're all done tuning the power curve. Uh, keep in mind that if you're boosting your car, there's more to do here with the power, but we'll talk about that later. So next you want to go into your engine file. Now there's a lot of lines of data here. Um, some of them less important than others. If you really want to see what every single line here does, I'm going to give you a link to this document called Assetto Corsa Modding Manual. You're going to search engine INI. Here you're going to get what every single line in the engine INI file means. So it would take me too long to go through all this. To be honest, I'm not even a master of all of this. But things that you should look at for right now is what your minimum RPM is. You know, what, what is your car idle at? I think it's probably lower than 700. I'm going to put 650 for this car. Then the rev limiter, but whatever, you know, your maximum RPM is. You have engine inertia. If you feel like the engine can rev up too fast in neutral when you get full throttle, then maybe add some extra inertia here. And this whole section deals with engine braking, but now let's say that we wanted to boost this car. So you're going to want to add this section right here, turbo underscore zero. This would be your first turbo. You know, if you had multiple turbos, you could add turbo underscore one as well. But we're just going to add one turbo. So the most important sections here are the wastegate, which is basically how much boost you can get out of the car, and the reference RPM, which is the RPM in which you achieve maximum boost. So the way these boost values work in wastegate, max boost, and display max boost is that this isn't a unit of PSI or any other unit of pressure. This is actually the amount of power that the car makes with this turbo compared to without the turbo. So if you had this wastegate set to zero, the car would make just as much power as without a turbo at all. If you have it set to 0.771, which I just used for a car that I was working on, the amount of power that the car makes would be 1.771 times the naturally aspirated horsepower. And that's starting at whatever reference RPM you put here. So the way that we're going to be able to determine what wastegate boost value to use is find a dyno graph of the car that you want, or your car, with the boost. So I found one right here, 298.35 horsepower, with some similar bolt-on mods to compare to what we had as our non-boosted setup. So take this 298, divide by the 198 that you had without boost, and you get 1.4747. Subtract 1, and you get 0.4747. Go ahead and put that in the wastegate section. And what this means is that you're going to get 47.5% more torque or power with the boost at, it, at full boost. So what you want to do is put that value in the wastegate, put it in the display max boost, and then add 0.1 in the max boost section right here. Uh, that's just standard practice. You're only going to get the 0.475 anyways because the wastegate is going to start letting off pressure at 0.475. And if you want to see what the rest of these values do, go ahead and check the Assetto Corsa mod manual. But also one thing, make sure that your turbo boost threshold in the damage section is higher than your wastegate turbo pressure, or you're going to start damaging your car. Head back to Content Manager, pack the car, one more time, check out the power graph. So now it looks like we're making 291 wheel horsepower. If you want, you can go ahead and scale up the wastegate value, or you can scale up the power.lut file. I'm just going to leave it at 291 for now. I think that's a good amount of power for a very light car. 
And now we're all done. The torque curve actually increases quite a bit until 3000 RPM, which is where we have our maximum boost. So now it, it's more sloped up for this entire section right here than it was before. And we're just making a total multiplied power all throughout this power band. Now if the car is supercharged, you get boost at any pressure linearly to your RPMs, right? So if you want, you could just not deal with this entire turbo section right here and just go ahead and scale your dyno graph to your supercharged dyno and just completely omit this entire section in the engine INI file. It might make things easier. Or you can add some kind of boost value and set the reference RPM to zero. That just makes things a little bit more complicated, but it's up to you. And finally, if you have a car that's turboed from the factory and you don't know how much power it makes without the turbo, you don't really have a good value to put for the wastegate. So what you can do is go to this website right here. I'm going to link it below. And if you're on TikTok, make sure you go to the YouTube video so you can see these links. But let's use the example of a super engine. So I'm going to put 3.0 liter. Um, all these things. It, it revs to like 7200 RPM, I think. Something like that. It's a turbocharged car. And I hear they make about 12 PSI of boost. So look at the bottom here. It gives you a calculation of how much power the car makes with boost and without boost. 387 with boost. That's right on the money. That's exactly how much those cars make on the dyno at the wheels. So 219 is the estimate for how much wheel horsepower this car makes without a turbo. So what you can do, take these numbers, 387 divided by 219, and you can see that the boosted power is 76.7% more than the naturally aspirated power. So what you would do for the wastegate is go ahead and put 0.767. And this is really just an estimate. Obviously these values are not perfect, but unless you can find a dyno of your car with zero boost, then this is what you're going to have to do. Now of course, for the sake of finishing off this video, let's not forget that turbo kits add some weight to your car. You have oil, you have intercoolers. So what I'm going to do is go into the car INI file, and we're going to add 15 kilograms. I'm assuming it maybe the turbo kit's about 15 kilograms extra. It's about 35 pounds. And then we're going to go into the suspension tab and bring the CG location just a hair forward. So we're going to do 0.59 because most of the turbo weight is in front of the car. And now we're done. I'm going to pack my data and we have our turbocharged GT86.